Folks, if you have your Bible with you, will you turn with me to John's Gospel, chapter 17, please? Just for a couple of verses. John 17 is a truly amazing chapter. It's the Lord's intercessory prayer. Not only for the disciples and for the apostles, but for us today. A beautiful, beautiful portion of scripture. John 17, please, and we'll read from verses 1 to 4. These words spoke, spake Jesus <clears throat> and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. And thou hast given him power over all flesh, and he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou hast given me to do. And we know that the Lord will bless the reading bless of Lord. his wonderful, wonderful word. These powerful few verses that we read at the start of this chapter really are amazing when you think of it. This is the Lord's prayer. We know we, we call the Lord's prayer that one that we all know so well. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. But this is, this is indeed the Lord's prayer. The other one is a lesson to us on how to pray. Whenever the disciples went to him and said, Lord, teach us how to pray. And he said, pray in this manner. But this is the Lord praying. I thank God that the Holy Spirit has, has uh, showed John this and it's left in scripture for us because evening after evening, whenever the Lord left his disciples, he went up into the mountain to pray. Or he went to the garden of Gethsemane to pray. There's places where he went to pray. And you know there are so many prayers that he prayed that we haven't heard. But this is one that's been recorded for us that we can read over and over and over and we can be blessed. And you know if I had a title this morning, it's the finished work of Christ. Because I love that little part of verse 4. It says, I have finished the work which thou gives me to do. Hallelujah. Now, this is even before the Lord had been in the garden of Gethsemane. Before even the night he was betrayed. This is even before the cross. But already the Lord is pointing to the victory of the cross. Folks, what a victory was wrought that day at Calvary. We need to remind ourselves daily of that. Every time I advertise our Sunday morning meetings here, I simply say, come and join like-minded believers as we celebrate the great victory we have in and through the Lord Jesus Christ. Because there's not one of us can save ourselves. Nothing that we can do will be good enough to pay the price of sin. He only could unlock the gates of heaven and let us in, praise the Lord. That's all what he has done. And you know, thank God, even in his prayer, which is running up to that week, as it were, before he was taken to the cross. And here he is, already speaking about the victory that was going to happen. Folks, we have victory this morning over death. Hallelujah. Folks, I can maybe probably drop before the day's out, but don't worry about me. You know, all there's will take to do with me. Somebody will put me in a lovely wooden box and put me in a nice wee plot of ground somewhere, and I'll be happy enough. Because I'll not be here, I'll be in glory because I'll have victory over death. Hallelujah. And I'll have victory over hell because I don't have to go there neither. I don't even have to go there to wait. There's no such thing as purgatory. Or there's no such time where you have to be refined before you make your way through. Whenever I pass here, I'll be passing the portals of glory. And I'll see the one who died for me. And then I'll know what I'll do. Hallelujah. I often said here, oh, that wonderful little song I can only imagine. We can only imagine what we'll say. We'll only imagine what we'll sing. We'll only imagine when we fall on our, our knees. I believe we will. We'll fall on our knees when we see him. When we see those nail scarred hands. When we see that wounded brow. And we look at him and we say, Lord, thank you for saving me. <laughs> Hallelujah. The great to be saved this morning. Praise your Lord. Not either, we're, not, we're not faltering or failing. We're saved and we're victorious this morning. Thank Glory to God. God. You know, I was pointing to this finished work. And the finished work of Christ it is that we have in and through that we have this incredible assurance when Christ cried on the cross it is finished. That's all we needed you know. It's finished. Glory to God. He declared it from the cross 
and it still stands today. Finished. Yes. And it can't be undone. Hallelujah. You, you can't go back in time and try to change anything. It's done. Hallelujah. And the old hymn writer said, the great transaction's done. That moment whenever Christ laid down his life for the many. Are you glad to be part of the many this morning? I know we're the remnant. I know we're the few. But we're part of something which is truly worldwide. And we're part of the many. Hallelujah. Folks, it's finished. And nothing can be added to it. You try to add anything to it, you're simply taken away from it. It's done completely. It's completed. And then I think it was wonderful. When he said, it is finished, the thrice holy God was satisfied. When Christ cried, it is finished. I believe that all of heaven cheered. What a victory. Now I know there's no mention of that in the Bible. But I don't believe that there was heads bowed in glory that day. I believe they knew, oh this is, this is the starts. Hallelujah. This is the victory. And we know that he was in the ground for three days. But on the third day, he rose again. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. You know, there's an awful lot of theory that goes around that says that he swooned upon the cross. You know, but that's nothing to tell you. He didn't swoon upon the cross. He died upon the cross. He gave up the ghost. He laid down his life as a ransom for many, praise the Lord. And you know, if he only swooned, folks, if he only swooned and came back, as it were, came around in his own strength, let me tell you, he wouldn't have been able to walk upon his feet. He wouldn't have been able to stand at the seashore that day and cook that fish. He wouldn't have been able to show himself alive with infallible proofs. This was something that was supernaturally done. As he was in the grave, the Spirit of God came back into that body and raised him. Hallelujah. And that same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead raises us daily. Hallelujah. You're not just, oh, all those years ago when you get saved and you've got a loud moth, bitten, moth, chewed testimony. Your testimony is as fresh and as new as the day and hour you get saved. Hallelujah. Because he renews you daily on the inside, does he not? Oh, hallelujah. You know, no grave, no tombstone was going to stop the Lord Jesus' wonderful resurrection. And remember that the same spirit, as I said, that raised Christ, raises you. You know, the devil and his horde, he thought that he said, I am finished. But he didn't, he said, it is finished. Hallelujah. Romans 8 and 11 says, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, does that same spirit dwell in you this morning? Oh, yes, it does. Yes, Glory to God. Yes. Folks, you can feel the spirit of God bubbling and brewing within you this morning as you hear these scriptures. When you raised up Christ from the dead, shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth within you. And then, of course, we know that Colossians 1 and verse 27 talks about Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Before you were saved, there was death in you, and you had no hope at all. But now you've got Christ in you, the hope of glory. And this finished work, which we boast in today. We boast about it today. Because we didn't do any of it ourselves. He has done it all. Well, I love when we sing that wonderful old chorus. Maybe we should have sung it this morning. Jesus paid it all. And all to him I owe. Bless Sin Lord. had left that crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. White as snow. Bless you, Lord. He took my, my debt. He paid the price. And glory to God, Amen. now I am free. That's Thank my you, first Lord. little point this morning. He paid my debt. There's something wonderful if you've got a debt and somebody else comes along and says, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll pay that for you. There's nothing that's nice to out somewhere and you're sat down and you've had a great meal and someone else gets up and goes, listen, I'm going to foot the bill. Doesn't it make it that wee bit more sweet? Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> of course it does. Oh, hallelujah. But this, folks, this is the greatest freebie of all. And it cost him so much and it costs us so little. All we need to do is put our faith and trust in him. Oh, hallelujah. He's paid my debt. I am free this morning. No longer do I have the shackles of sin around me. No longer am I a slave to the devil and to his horde. No longer am I a slave to this world. I'm a new creation. I'm a new creature in Christ. 
Hallelujah. And every single day we get closer and we get closer and he refines us day after day after day. You might have been through the fire this morning. You know, it's not nice going through the fire, but listen, when you come out the other side of the fire, you'll be something that wee bit more pure than what you were when you went in. And as you're going through the fire, remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, there was one who was in the fire with them. He'll, bring, he'll lead you through. And he'll bring you through. Hallelujah. Titus 2 and 14, talking about our debts being, being, made, being made free, says, Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us, or buy us back, from all iniquity, and purify us unto himself, a peculiar people, zealous of good works. I can't think of a finer verse than showing you what it was like this morning to be seared. Hallelujah. Speaking of his wonderful atoning death, paying the penalty for my sin, paying the penalty for the sin of the whole world because it was laid on him. The guilty, all the this unrighteousness, all the sin of this world. And we can say this morning, we can shout this morning that the blessed Lamb of God died to give us life. Gave himself for us. Think about that for a moment. He gave himself. And I know you hear this week after week. And I know you've read it in the scriptures. You know, some of you are saved long than I'm alive. But don't ever let these verses become cold to you. Never ever let these verses mean nothing to you any longer. I've read that before. Don't ever let that. Let this speak to you this morning. He, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God, heaven's Finest, the one who was here even before the creation of this earth, the one who breathed into us and we became living souls, the one who he and the Father and the Holy Spirit knit us together within our mother's womb, he who is eternal, oh hallelujah, the wonderful king of glory, gave himself for us. Friends, if that doesn't pull on the heart cords, check the pulse this morning. There's something seriously wrong because he gave himself for us. A ransom for the many. It's those little words. And folks, I wrote them in capital letters. That spoke to me so much this week as I was writing that down. I know we know it. And I know we know it. And I know we're saved. And we hear it all the time, folks. But let's remind ourselves he, not an angel. Not just some man. Oh, hallelujah. The blessed Lamb of dark Calvary gave himself. He didn't send an angel. He didn't send anyone other. As I said, quoted earlier on, there was no other good enough to pay the price of sin. The Lord Jesus has given everything. Everything. Why, how, how did he give everything? He gave himself. He had nothing more that could be taken I mean, they stripped him right down. That was the shame that he bore as he hung upon the cross. He was, he was altogether naked. And there he was. And he, they, 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 they cast lots for, for, his, for his very clothes. And, and, and they mocked him and they made fun of him. And he gave everything. Every drop of blood that was in him was given for us. Every wound that was placed upon him, every lash that was placed upon him, every stripe that was placed upon him, was for us, hallelujah, Praise was for Lord. our healing, for our salvation, for our atonement, and he rose again for our justification, and our sanctification, oh hallelujah, and every accusation that was made against the Lord, in the judgment halls, they weren't accusations about him, they were my accusations, why did I say that this morning, because I was the blasphemer, I was the one who blasphemed God. He didn't. If he said he was the son of God, he was the son of God. He is and always will be the son of God. Hallelujah. He did no wrong. They accused him of being a wrongdoer. I was the wrongdoer. They said he was a liar. He wasn't a liar. He spoke nothing but truth. He is all truth. I'm the liar. One of the scriptures said, let God be true and all men be liars. Friends, that's all we are, you know. I was the guilty party. I thank God all my sin was laid upon him. Colossians 2 and verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. You know, oftentimes, 
I think of the accuser of the brethren, Satan. And you know, he's only allowed up so far. He can't get through the gates of glory. I believe he stands out the front. And he still has his little letter, hasn't he? He still has his ordinances. He still has his accusations. That he comes and he says, I want to shout in here. I want to tell all the saints in heaven about the calm down there. Let me tell you what he is. And he's standing in the queues. And when he's given up on me and picked on Davy Craig, oh, that's I'll tell you what he's like. And you know what? He's right in what he says. But what I think is wonderful, when the Lord takes that scrap of paper off him, there's nothing on it. Praise because they've been blotted out by the blood of the Lamb. Bless you, Lord. Glorify you. Yes, you're a nerd, do well. You're a rotter, you're a bad one. But you're under the blood. Praise you're Lord. saved. Hallelujah. The lies, the hatred, the immorality, the drunkenness, the pride, the anger, everything that disgusts the holy God were laid upon him. And I am free. Free, hallelujah. We have no accusers. We have no condemnation. He took the certificate of death and now he's written on it, paid in full. Oh, bless you, Lord. oh hallelujah. Christ paid the price. The next little P is simply this. What's he done? Has he paid the price? He has given us the potential to live in him. Folks, this is where I get really, this is an hobby hobby horse of mine. And I don't always get things. Because I look at Christians and go, what potential do you have to serve God? What potential do you have to make such an impact on this sinful world? Because God has an anointing upon you. And you're a lazy, rotten ghost and won't do anything about it. You lie in your bed, you lie in your bones and do nothing. And you could be those that are upturning the world. Let it always be said about us that we are a little rabble from Bali Son. And yet we're turning the world upside down in its head with the word of God. That's what we want. People that you know have got talents to burn. My goodness. And they refuse. And they refuse. And they refuse to use it. Heaven help us. I would love to be able to sing like a canary. I would never be off the platform. I'd love to be able to play the guitar. I'd play all day long. Oh, but terrible. If I could be a one-man band for God, I'd be a one-man band for God. If I could play the piano, I would do it. Hallelujah. If I could sing like some of the great baritones or tenors, I would sing all the day long. And yet, yet, there are so many believers. I'm not speaking to you this morning. Good. If I'm annoying you this morning, Good, praise the Lord. I want to know you this morning. Because you've got talents and you sit in your hands. And you go, I'm waiting for somebody to ask me. Listen, you've been asked. 2,000 years ago, he said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Bless you. By whatever means, sing the gospel. Pray the gospel. Praise the gospel. Preach the gospel. Live the gospel. Oh. <laughs> <coughs> Praise the Lord, Lord. Fill the lungs. Hallelujah. The Lord has given you a potential to live for Him. Not just exist for Him. I just turn up on a Sunday and throw your money into the pit and go, Hey, our Lord, I was here again. He knows you were here. What are you doing the rest of the week for Him? Yeah. Hallelujah. A life lived in Christ, folks. There's nothing better. The fellowship and the communion that you can have with Him. We live in him, live in his ways, live in his words, live in his wonders, live in his precept. When you start to live in his ways and in his word, you start to live in his wonders as well. Folks, you can pray into things and see God's hand begin to move in everything. When you get to pray up in the middle of the night in the darkness of the house and sit on the edge of your bed and think about things to pray for. Hang on, I want, and then watch, watch and wait, watch and see God begin to move. We send a little text message round to one another on a, on a Saturday evening here within the session. It was usually about 8 o'clock or so. The evening's coming in and the weekend's getting over. And what we usually do is we're, we're praying for Sunday morning. And the one thing that we're always asking is this. That the Lord would just turn up on Sunday morning and do something wonderful to truly amaze us. Not just to come and have church the way we have church but they're truly amazing. And Lord, send in who you want to send in. And see, as we started doing that, 
I'm going to amaze at the amount of people that God and they get into sin. Praise God. You look around and you go, wow, there's a lot of empty church. There's a lot of illness. There's a lot of sickness this morning. I'm going to pray for that at the end. But God is moving. And I challenge you in your prayer life and in your prayer time, pray big prayers. Don't go many mouth before the Lord. Listen, it's like, it's like standing, I know, it's, forgive me for using that this analogy, but it's like standing in a toy shop and you've been asked, you've been told you can have anything you want in here. I'm walking out with a wee bag of green men. You can have anything that's there. It's the same when we come in prayer. Let's not just ask for small things. Let's ask for great things. Ask that the Lord will move in your family and save every woman. Name them by name. Claim them and say, Lord, I'm claiming them for you. In Jesus' name. Claim this city. Or in Jesus' name. When you're walking home, every step you take, be like Joshua. Now I'm claiming the land for the Lord. Even shout it out and speak it out. So people think you're mad. Don't worry about it. They know you're mad anyway because you're saved. Let them know you're really mad. And claim it. And even if it must be, this is guys as well too. Smith Wigglesworth was something else, was he that many men home. You know, he was asked to go to the Blackpool many, many years ago to take a meeting. And as he was, as he was there, he sat down with the brother and asked him. And they said, oh, he says, well, yes, definitely. We'll have the meeting in Blackpool. He said, well, we know what we need to do first before we have any meetings. He says, well, we need to go out here and have a time of prayer. So away they went. And all the were standing in the middle of the road. And all the brother were looking at him going, it's a mess, boy. He says, come on. He says, if we can't stop the traffic here in the natural, how are we going to stop anything in the supernatural? And they got all their knees in the crowd in the road and the people blow their horns and got all head up and annoyed and bothered. Well, folks, it was a great revival happening. Yeah. I'm not saying we need to wait on the middle of the crumbling road there and block the traffic. <laughs> <laughs> Unless the Lord tells you to do that. But if you're carried up the road with the 11A, <laughs> you work us to the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Folks, Christ lives within you and He's our hope of glory. We have a life of victory here. Of course we do. We have, yes, we have our problems as well, too. But haven't we got one we can carry our problems to? And He lifts them and carries our burdens. Eternal life is assured with Him and that amazing home prepared for us by Christ Himself. 2 Corinthians 5 and 15 says, And He, and that He died for all. That they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Folks, we've got the potential to be a witness for Christ. We have a testimony of his saving grace to tell all. We have a potential to be involved in the greatest commission ever called. The greatest call I've ever been when Jesus called his disciples and still calls his disciples today. We could be sent into no matter where it is in the world. We might mightn't get as far as the Gallon Street. That might, be, that might be as far as we're, we're going here. But who knows? You could be sent anywhere in the world if you allow yourself to be open and allow yourself to be used. Think about this but before we go to the next point. You have the potential to be a soul winner. Think of that. Sitting beside someone and leading them to the Lord in a prayer. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, there's nothing more wonderful, you know. We want to be soul winners, not seat warmers. That's what we want to be. Used of God for the building up of the saints and the encouragement of the church. To be fishers of men, winning many to Christ. And to witness the saving power. And to see lives transformed through Christ. There's nothing better than to simply be in a signpost and say, this is the Lord. This is his ways. Walk in him. Put your faith and trust in him. Hallelujah. Folks, not only has he paid our debts, he's cancelled our sin. Hallelujah. He's also given us the potential to live an abundant life in him. But finally, he has given us power. Power. We might not have any authority here. We don't have any titles here. Folks, I want to tell you something. You have a power within you to subdue guns. That's the truth. You have a power within you to stop wars. You have a power within you. If you don't believe me, you go and read Hebrews 10, 11 and 12. And come back to me and go, hey man, you were right. You have a power within you which is tapped into the greatest power of all. 
which is heaven itself. You have the Holy Spirit, the third part of the triune God living within you. Glory to God. There's a power within you. Revelation 12 and verse 11. Now I know they're talking about those yet to come, but listen, we, we know what it is. We, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Folks, we can overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb. When he comes to us and tempts us, we can overcome him. We can overcome the world because Christ overcame the world. Hallelujah. We, we can overcome the malicious attacks of the devil. We can overcome the threats and the ramblings of the devil. We can overcome the lies and the accusations of the devil. We can overcome all those things. And folks, what is it? It's the blood that gives us the victory. So I sang that one this morning. That's your blood, Lord, that gives us the victory. Victory over what? Victory over the flesh. Victory over the world. Victory over the devil. A party overcome the old ways. A party overcome the world. And not to be conformed to the world. There's nothing as weak as Christians, folks, conformed to the world. They just go to swallow the world's pills. They say, oh, well, that's, that's all we can do. Well, we can do nothing more. What are, you, what are we saying here? The Lord has given us something powerful, folks. Use it. Tap in in prayer. Believe. We've a power to overcome the devil. Yes, he's a relentless foe. But why, is, why does he always have to be the relentless foe to us? Why can we not be a relentless foe to him? Why can we not be the greatest thorn in his flesh? Why can we not be the one that constantly, constantly, constantly is crushing his head? Hallelujah. Here's the power. James 4 and 7. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will walk away. Flee. You have to run. Hallelujah. Why? Because you bring out the word of God. It's like, whoa, straight from the hip. Hallelujah. Oh, Piers, he used to say he used to preach from the shoulder. But we're going to shoot from the hip in here. He can preach from the shoulder all he wants. And the ones who are coming, he was carrying. But anyway, all the same. Folks, we're going to beat the devil to where I'm going to beat him in his ways as well too. And I know I'm no match for him. But he that's within me is greater than he that's within the world. Folks, we can get victory over that old accuser. And one day, he will be cast down. And I've said this to you before. When he's cast into hell, I want to shout hallelujah louder than anyone else. Hallelujah. We have a victory because all his accusations mean nothing. Because it has to go back to our first point this evening, or this morning. And that's simply this. That Christ has already paid the penalty for our sins. Paid it all. He's given you a wonderful potential, folks, to live a great and a powerful and a mighty life in God. And he has given you the power, oh, hallelujah, to do it in Jesus' love. Thank you. May Thank these you. few remarks be a blessing to you this morning. And I just trust and pray that you leave this house and you say, Lord, what would you have me to do today? Would you have me to do this week? And just wait upon the Lord. And let's see what wonderful, wonderful things you can do for him this week. Lord, we thank you this morning that we're once again found in your house. We thank you, O oh God, for the songs of Zion that we sang this morning. And Lord, we thank you that one day we did come to that cross. And Lord, well, we, we watched our sovereign die. But oh Lord, we thank you for the blood this morning that cleanses us from all sin, from all unrighteousness. And Lord, we thank you that we have indeed when the penalty has been paid, we have the potential and we have the power to work and work on you. Lord, I just pray you bless your people here this morning. Lord, we look around and we see empty chairs this morning. And Lord, we can, we, we're creatures of habit. We know who would normally sit in them. And we ask, oh God, that you would go to them. Perhaps they're watching us online this morning. But Lord, you would go to them in their homes. And that, Lord, that you would bring healing. That you would touch, Lord, those who need a healing touch from you this morning. Well, Lord, Lord, we know that there are those who, who really do need a, 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 a miracle, oh God. And Lord, we come to you a miracle work in God. We come to one who tells us in his word, I am the God that healeth thee. Lord, will you go and bring healing to our, our brothers and sisters in Christ yes, in Jesus' Lord. lovely name. Lord, for those who have got family problems and family issues, I pray you would go to them as well to strengthen them and help them at this time. Lord, I pray that you would raise them back up again and bring them back to this house. And Lord, I just simply pray, Lord, over the empty chairs which are here. Lord, as we pray every week, Lord, send folk in. Yes. Lord, send sinners in that don't, that don't know you. And Lord, transform them in this place. Save their precious souls. And Lord, send them out into the work. We pray in Jesus' love. Amen. 
Lord, we've got careful to give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. And Lord, for ourselves that are here this morning, Lord, I just pray a blessing over every, every head, over every heart, and over every home. And Lord, I just simply pray, have your way in our lives. Use us, O oh God. We know that you'll not abuse us, but use us, O oh God. Yes, have Lord. us, O oh Lord, unlock the potential that we have in you. And Lord, make us soul winners and make us wise, because all we know that all soul winners are wise. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Bring us back this evening to our gospel meeting. And Lord, I pray, as we bring our challenge tonight, that perhaps someone here in the room or someone at home will put their faith and trust in you. Yes. Lord, we just leave ourselves open. We ask for your blessing. In Jesus' lovely name. Amen. Amen. Bless and you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen.